Hi, welcome back. Today we would be discussing about the surgical treatment for adenoid hypertrophy. So in the previous videos, we did discuss what issues these children with adenoid enlargement can present you with. So basically because of nasal obstruction, these children have an upper airway resistance. There is significant resistance to airflow. So these children are not able to breathe through the nose. They continue to breathe through the mouth. In those subset of patients who have severe upper airway resistance, in children who have significant sleep disturbances, in children who have significant changes in the facial profile, we generally recommend adenoidectomy. So adenoidectomy is nothing but the surgical removal of the adenoid tissue. Now this is a fairly simple procedure which is done under general anesthesia. Again, this procedure can be accomplished in different ways. There are different tools that are used for carrying out adenoidectomy. As of now, the most popular method would be an endoscopic assisted adenoidectomy, wherein an endoscope is introduced to the nasal cavity and under visualization, we can either shave off the adenoid tissue from the nasopharynx or you could even use newer technology gadgets like your coblator. Now, ultimately, what matters is a complete removal of the tissue so as to ensure relief of nasal obstruction. Now, is it a complicated procedure? Generally not. The complication that one could encounter with adenoid surgery is bleeding. However, this is something that is taken care of at the end of the surgical procedure. So before the patient is brought out of anesthesia, we ensure that hemostasis is secured or the bleeding is controlled adequately. Very rarely, there could be bleeding in the post-operative period. However, these are things that are generally managed by the surgeon. Are there any kind of precautions that needs to be taken after the surgery? Not really. Frankly speaking, there would be no diet restrictions. The child is free to have whatever he or she desires. Diet restrictions are generally put in place only if the child simultaneously undergoes a tonsillectomy as well. Now, frequently asked questions are, would there be a change in the voice of my child after the surgery? Now, what you need to understand is the fact that whenever you have a nasal obstruction, so when your nose is blocked for that matter, for the simple matter, if you were to kind of pinch your nostrils and talk, you can see that there is a change in the tone of your voice, right? So a child who has significant adenoid enlargement would be talking in such a tone when you have significant amount of tissue obstructing the nasal passage. So once you remove the adenoid tissue, what happens is that the airflow, airflow improves and as a result, you would kind of notice a change in the tone. So this is not actually a voice change, but this is probably the real voice of the child. The other frequently asked questions following adenoidectomy or tonsillectomy is, is there any chance that my child's immunity would be affected? What one needs to understand is that when you talk about these lymphoid tissue, these are a part of your defense mechanism. So generally, if you see the growth pattern by around seven years of age, the tonsils, adenoids, they tend to start shrinking and into teens, they usually disappear. Now, the important thing is you have other defense mechanisms that actually develop and over a period of time take over the role. So by removing the tonsils or adenoids, it generally would not affect, affect the immunity of your child. So thank you so much. 